Did y'all saw, if you watched Susan's last video about the uh, making tomato soup, we had a little bit of a problem with the height adjustment. Uh, when you're using a green screen and you got two different people involved and we don't know exactly what the heights are, uh, the first couple of shots I was looking over her head and I finally got things tuned in a little bit later on and actually got the thing right. But we've been practicing a little bit with the eye to eye thing and uh, I think we can do a whole lot better this time. But to give you an idea of exactly what I was working with, let me show you this. Now you see the height situation right here. Why when I was looking this way, I was looking over the top of her head. She said she was five foot tall and uh, she's yeah. five foot tall. So. And I kept telling you I'm short. I'm really, really short. <laughs> yeah, okay. I understand now. But what I want to do right now, she's got a list of uh, hydroponic questions, the ones that I get asked most often and a few other ones thrown in there. So we're just going to take a few minutes and uh, answer a bunch of hydroponic questions and uh, try to have a little bit of fun. Okay, the first question is, where do you get your square buckets from? The square buckets. Everybody asks about the square buckets and that's a very simple deal. They came from the feed store. They originally had a manganese based fertilizer in them that the farmers put on the peanut crops. And the guy that runs the feed store just saved me a bunch of buckets and uh, I ended up using them in the, the Dutch bucket setup. Now you don't have to have a square bucket. The round buckets, a rectangle bucket, any kind of bucket would be just fine. Preferably something about a three gallon size. The bigger it is, the four and five gallon, the more meter you have to put in there and the more it's going to cost you. But you don't have to have a square bucket just because that's what I had there. The round ones or whatever else you can find will work just as well. Okay, and does the color matter? Does the color matter? <laughs> Actually it does. You want to get a dark bucket, uh, something that's uh, is going to keep the light from going in there. That's why mine, I put black plastic on them because they were so, um, the white was almost translucent and you kind of get algae built up in there but put black plastic on or something dark and uh, block out that light. That's a very good question. All right, and what is the part number for the grommet that goes in the bottom of the bucket? The part number for that grommet is 3MPL8. I got it from Granger. I've had people tell me they got the, uh, the grommets similar at various other places. Uh, what I would do is put a link in the bottom down here and you can click on it and see the description of it and it'll give you the, uh, the exact specs for it and then if you don't want to use Granger, you can find it somewhere else, you can uh, do that. But that'll give you the exact size specifications of it. Okay, and where do you buy perlite? Where do you buy perlite? I get mine at the local feed store. I buy it in a four cubic foot bag, it's about 18 bucks. If you have to pay to have it shipped to you, that's going to be a problem because uh, those, those big bags about this tall are probably going to cost you 30, 40 bucks to ship it and it's going to mess you up. Uh, are there any alternatives? To yes, perlite? yes. If you don't have perlite, you can use any kind of stone will be fine as long as it doesn't have any limestone in it. Little pebbles, rocks, you can use the hydrogen. <laughs> There's a lot of different things you can use. The only consideration you have to worry about, again, is the uh, something that's going to alter the pH in it and also be too heavy for you to work with. So if you're going to use rocks, make sure you don't use a five gallon bucket. Use a three gallon or put half halfway in the five gallon. It should be okay. Okay, if a stock solution has an EC of 1.8 at 74 degrees Fahrenheit, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> how would a 10 degree drop in temperature affect those values? <laughs> I ain't got, this, is, this is not fine of jeopardy here. Where did you get that question from? <laughs> and what would the pH be? <laughs> I haven't a clue. <laughs> um, next question, please. I don't know. The, I have no idea about the EC and the temperature okay. change, all that kind of stuff. Gardens benefit when good bacteria is added to the soil through compost. Do you add anything like that with hydroponics? I do not. Uh, there are some people who like to put the, uh, the mycorrhiza stuff in there. There's something called, made by a company called Great White or the brand that you put in there and uh, that supposedly does a real good job with the roots. But um, I've never got into that kind of stuff. When I'm messing with the soil, I try to build up the soil as best I can. But with the hydroponic stuff, I give it the fertilizer solution and let it go. Uh, where do you buy your hydroponic supplies like rock wool and net pots? Um, I buy them from a whole lot of different places. And the thing is, I get them a lot of times at a discount. The people know me, they know, you know, I buy a decent amount and they would like for me to speak highly of them, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So there's quite a few places that I actually do buy from. I do buy from a grower supply, which is a division of farm tech, very big company. A uh, little place out west called the East West Hydro. 
they've done me pretty good. Um, Dayton Hydroponics up in Dayton, Ohio. I've ordered from uh, New England Hydroponics uh, off of Amazon. What I try to do is just encourage you, when you're ordering something, don't look at the base price of the product. Factor in the cost of the shipping, add all this stuff together, and then see what you got to work with. Because a lot of times, um, you might save a quarter or something on the product itself and have to pay a dollar more for the shipping, so it just won't make sense. So shop around. Those are some good companies I have dealt with, and I'm sure there's plenty more out there. I just truck passed by. This is what you get when you're trying to find a central location to try to shoot a video on the spot. All right, next question. What size Rockwell cubes do you use and what size net pots? I use the 1.5 inch Rockwell cubes and a 2 inch net pot. That's primarily what I use for growing just about everything right now. In the rail setup that I had, I did use a 3 inch net cup or net pot. But right now, everything is a pretty much a 2 inch pot and a 1.5 inch cube. Fits absolutely perfect. <laughs> Yes. What is the atomic weight of nitrogen? I don't know that question either, just Alex Trebek. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I can look that one up though. Yeah, that's... Can you use the Dutch buckets outside? Absolutely. There's a... I did a little small test setup with just four buckets to see how they would do, to see what kind of effect the rain would have on them and you know that kind of deal. And I really didn't have any trouble with them. And if you search Dutch buckets on YouTube right now, you'll find uh, several people this year who did very elaborate setups outside and it worked extremely well. So you don't need a greenhouse to use your Dutch bucket stuff. How is it possible to grow plants in a hydroponic setup without using an air pump? You had to see Mr. Cracky for that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so people ask a lot of times or they comment, hey man, you need to put an air pump in there or your stuff ain't going to grow, it's going to die. And I try to tell them, no, Mr. Kratke, B.A. Kratke, uh, found out that if you put a plant, put the uh, water right at the base of the net pot, as that water level drops, the plant consumes the water, it will actually grow a different kind of root that will allow it to absorb the oxygen that it needs. Normally, the roots will be submerged in the water and pulling oxygen from the water, like in a deep water culture setup. But in this situation, the roots come out at the top, absorb the oxygen, the other roots keep growing in the water and absorb the water and nutrients and you can do this without an air pump. Look up B.A. Cracky, it'll tell you all about it. Uh, what variety of lettuce do you grow? What variety of lettuce? Uh, yep, over and over. Adriana, A-D-R-I-A-N-A. -A. I bought it from a Johnny Seeds. It is a heat tolerant butterhead lettuce. It does well in the winter time too, certainly in a greenhouse. And y'all seen the heads, it'll get out here like this if you're, you know, under good conditions. And even the poorest ones I've had have always been much better than anything I could get in the store. So the, the lettuce that I prefer to grow is Adriana. Can you use any kind of lettuce? Yes. Yeah, you don't need, it doesn't have to be something, there, there's no such thing as a hydroponic lettuce seed. Uh, lettuce seed is lettuce seed. You can grow it in the soil in a hydroponic setup, either one. The only thing you have to take into consideration is the growth habit of it. Something like, um, say, the black seed of Simpson is not going to make a head. It's a leaf lettuce that you're supposed to pull off a little bit at a time. Uh, just factor that in and pick whatever kind you like to eat and grow it well. And which hydroponic setup would you recommend for a beginner? For a beginner, like you? Like me. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would say use, use what Mr. Cracky did. Um, the video I think I just posted it recently showed, I, I wrote a list, everything you need to do. Once, once your seedling gets this big, from the time it gets this big till it gets like this, the only thing you have to do is this. <laughs> Stand there and watch it. You put your water and your nutrients in there right from the start and you never have to do anything else to it other than maybe uh, dealing with some bugs or something like that. It's a really, really simple way to grow. And the last question, do you take requests for one-on-one -on -one teaching <laughs> sessions? <laughs> uh, I've, I've had people uh, ask if they could come out and visit um, to try to see what I do and uh, spend some one-on-one -on -one time and try to teach them and everything. And I've had requests, you know, do you travel and stuff like that. Um, for the most part, when people come by, um, I will stop and talk to them and give, the, give them the uh, necessary amount of time. It's difficult for me to uh, commit to having a lot of people come by because I just have so much other stuff going on. But 
Uh, under the right circumstances, yeah, I could probably do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, teaching session with somebody, especially if they had a bunch of donuts and pastries. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, guys, this is going to wrap it up right here. Um, that was a bunch of the most asked comments that I get or most asked questions that I get over and over and over. So, as we always say, hope it helps. <laughs> Y'all take care. Lord willing, we'll see you next time. If you found this video to be helpful, informative, entertaining, or just downright funny, don't forget to subscribe. All right, question, can you read it? Oh. No, you good. I was looking at the microphone. I was like right under it and you're... Oh, I'm, I'm, well, I'm actually because of taller, over. you're closer than you are. <laughs> Truck passing by. Nice and quiet compared to my airplane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is just a test to see if it'll actually listen to both of us talking at the same time, which is one microphone. Okay. Say something. Something. So you can't be in this camera shot. I'm trying to think what I'm supposed to say here. <laughs> All right, we try it again. Ready? Hey guys, as y'all saw, if you watched uh, Susan's last video about uh, making the tomato soup, we were doing some green screen. <laughs> That's what I do all the time. <laughs> all right, now. <laughs> I have a gnat that's been following me.